Hello, students. Hello, am I audible to you? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I audible to you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Today, actually, uh, Sri Ram had agreed to bring a case, but uh, I think he is uh, otherwise engaged. So, what shall we do today? Shall I? Anybody who is having a case, or then uh, I will. I have brought a case, and we can discuss that case. Any volunteers to discuss the case? Pradeep, would you like to discuss? Rajan Vasist, do you like to discuss? Any volunteers? Vishnoi, would you like to discuss? I think you should uh, uh, come out to uh, ready to discuss because uh, only by repeatedly discussing you will gain the confidence to face the exam. Agnath, would you like to discuss the case? Okay, if there is nobody, I think I can ask uh, Saroj to do it because she will be always ready to discuss the case. Saroj, would you like to discuss? Saroj, are you? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Hi, sir. Okay, shall we start then? Yes, sir. Okay, I will. Okay, now let's start. Yes, sir. 52 year old female housewife complaining of exertional breathlessness for last 24 years. Irregular head palpitation for last 12 years. Intermittent swelling of both the legs for last 12 years. Okay, based on the initial symptoms, what is your thought process? Sir, she is a uh, 52 year old female. Hmm. So, sir, breathlessness uh, uh, for last 24 years, long standing breathlessness. Okay. So, she is symptomatic from the age of 28? Yes, sir. Okay. So, what are the possibilities in your mind? And uh, here look that the uh, patient has got a regurgitant lesion. Okay, you should describe what may be the etiology to start with. 28, uh, at yes, the age sir. Of yes, sir. At the age of 28 years, if she has started, sir, first I will think of uh, 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 valvular heart disease, possibly rheumatic origin of yeah. uh, regurgitant uh, uh, type of lesion. Long standing history, uh, uh, rheumatic heart disease. You need not go for the regurgital lesion, you can consider stenotic also, but um, uh, at the most mild or low moderate lesion. It's, yes. not a, it's not a severe lesion and the progression of the disease process also is very slow. So that would be the way in which you can discuss. I agree with you that um, uh, regurgital lesions take longer time for deterioration while stenotic lesions can deteriorate faster. So, of the two lesions, you can give importance to regurgitation lesion. But the most important point you have to stress is that most likely our, le our lesions are mild or low moderate. Okay, then what happened? For the, she had irregular palpitation? Yes, sir. So, something has gone wrong with my this thing, sir. Just one minute, sir. Something has gone wrong with your what? Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, sir, I could not see the screen, sir. Oh, uh, now uh, now I, uh, it is visible, sir. Okay. 
history of present illness no 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 uh, next point oh. is irregular palpitation what do you think it is yes sir sir irregular palpitation uh, sir uh, possibly this is atrial fibrillation in a patient with rheumatic heart disease which valve involvement gives rise to sir, mitral valve involvement yes, mitral valve involvement so regular palpitation palpitation which is most likely atrial fibrillation you can start thinking that uh, the patient might have, have might, might be having mitral disease and that is the cause for atrial fibrillation okay aortic valve involvement is less likely to give rise to atrial fibrillation okay then intermittent swelling of both the legs sir it means sir uh, patient has gone into right heart failure okay the most uh, it indicates that probably the patient has got some degree of right heart involvement resulting in systemic congestion and swelling of both the legs now what are the possibilities hello sir hello sir what, what are the possibilities for for you to discuss intermittent swelling of both the legs giving rise to right heart uh, uh, systemic congestion Uh, features of right heart failure. What may be the uh, pathogenesis? Sir, most probably, the, uh, sir, uh, patient has got a uh, tricuspid regurgitation, and sir, uh, patient uh, right cannot heart. go so, suddenly go in for tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, you said that there is some mitral valve disease. Yes, sir. Uh, so, patient has uh, developed the pulmonary venous hypertension, then sir, pulmonary artery hypertension, and sir. Uh, backward uh, 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 sir failure and sir then sir systemic congestion okay the patient might have developed uh, pulmonary venous congestion pulmonary arterial hypertension and that might have resulted in uh, uh, the stress on the right ventricle right ventricular uh, uh, that can result in tricuspid regurgitation uh, all these features might have contributed to development of intermittent swelling of the both the legs okay so if the patient has developed pulmonary arterial hypertension then what is the more likely lesion is a regurgitation lesion or a stenotic lesion on the mitral valve of the mitral valve so then uh, more likely to be a uh, stenotic lesion stenotic lesion mitral regurgitation uh, uh, gives rise to uh, uh, pulmonary artery hypertension quite late while mitral stenosis can give rise to uh, pulmonary artery hypertension quite early in the in the natural history of the disease process why it is so uh, sir because sir um, in case of mitral regurgitation oh. the la compliance is uh, 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 high as a result it will take more time for the pulmonary venous hypertension to develop no that's not the reason no compliance is uh, applicable to both stenotic as well as regurgitant lesions if the la is not compliant then both in stenotic as well as regurgitant lesions the pulmonary artery the left atrial pressure can quickly go up that can result in pulmonary venous congestion But in patients with mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation or rheumatic etiology, there is sufficient time for the uh, the left atrium to become compliant, can uh, increase in size, and hence uh, the uh, compliance of the right atrium, the left atrium. Uh, of course, uh, it may be restricted, but it is applicable to both um, mitral regurgitation as well as mitral stenosis equally. Yeah. What is the difference in the LA pressure in patients with mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation? That's the point you should know. Yes, sir. Uh, in case of left at, uh, mitral stenosis, left atrial pressure is high, higher than the left, uh, uh, that in the mitral regurgitation. Not completely correct. Um, you have to add a small bit before that left atrial pressure. Pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is high. No, that is high. I agree. Why it is high? That's a question. Any one of you? Any 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 of the participants would you like to give a comment? In what phase of cardiac cycle does the uh, pressure in the left atrium goes up in mitral regurgitation? Okay. In what phase of cardiac cycle does the pressure in the left atrium go up in mitral regurgitation? Sir, 
during systole during systole then what happens in diastole sir in diastole it will decrease decrease because the mitral valve is not obstructed mitral valve opens out completely and that will result in emptying of the left atrium to left ventricle left atrial pressure comes down what happens in mitral stenosis left atrial pressure is higher in uh, diastole sir in mitral stenosis no, that is not correct it can be high in systole also because when the blood uh, comes into a left the left atrial pressure is higher in diastole or, or systole normally left atrial pressure is it higher during diastole or systole uh, during diastole during the left atrial pressure is higher during diastole systole sir diastole means sir uh, uh, atrial diastole or atrial systole sir it will be more uh, during atrial systole uh, whenever we are sir, referring about systole or diastole yeah when when the cross systole or diastole not the atrial yes sir see what is happening during uh, 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 when the cross systole to the atrium what is happening to the uh, to the blood flow uh, uh, to the atrium during ventricular systole that is flowing into the atrial filling sir atrial filling sir atrial filling atrial filling, atrial filling, atrial filling the venous drainage into the atrium takes place atrial filling takes place the atrial pressure goes up what happens to the atrium during diastole atrium empties into diastole into left ventricle and the corresponding ventricle and the uh, atrial pressure comes down so yes. atrial pressure is higher during uh, ventricular systole than ventricular diastole normally in mitral regurgitation it's significantly higher because of the regurgitation what is the difference in the left atrial pressure in mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation that is what i want to know hemodynamically anyone of you euro Uh, it will be high both in uh, systole and diastole, sir. Yeah, that's the most. Yeah, that's the most important point. The left atrial pressure will be uniformly elevated in systole as well as diastole, meaning uh, there is a mean left atrial pressure, significant mean left atrial pressure elevation in mitral stenosis. While in a patient with uh, mitral regurgitation, the left atrial pressure is elevated during. systole significantly elevated but immediately the following systole when there is a diastole the whole left atrial pressure comes down because of the emptying of the left atrium into the left ventricle because of that the um, the pulmonary venous pressure does not significantly rise in mitral in regurgitation lesions but it significantly rises in stenotic lesions and hence the pulmonary artery hypertension occurs quite early in mitral stenosis and it occurs very late in mitral regurgitation when does the uh, pulmonary artery hypertension develop in mitral regurgitation saroj yes sir sir when when lv fails when very good when when, when, when lv failure is there when lv starts failing the left atrial pressure goes yes, up sir. and that will result in pulmonary yes, venous congestion and pulmonary edema pulmonary artery hypertension but in patients with uh, mitral stenosis when the when there is an obstruction to the flow of blood from the left atrium to left ventricle that will result in uniform elevation of the left atrial pressure that will result in pulmonary congestion and early development of pulmonary that will result yes the diastolic dysfunction also will affect similarly sir the if lv diastolic dysfunction in like in hypertension occurs that will affect in case of mitral regurgitation to develop the uh, this uh, the pulmonary hypertension earlier sir yeah when, when, when there is a systemic hypertension there are a lot, lot of things happening but what happens to mitral regurgitation it will uh, it will increase sir it will increase why because the forward flow will decrease because of the increased resistance sir not only that what is the pressure head which uh, drives the mitral regurgitation pressure lv uh, uh, lv systolic pressure sir oh the gradient between lv systolic pressure and the pressure and the la uh, left atrial pressure LA when, the, uh, when the uh, when there is systemic hypertension that will result in elevation of the la systolic lv systolic pressure so the mitral regurgitation becomes much more more Prominent. Yes, sir. 
when there is lv hypertrophy what happens the patient with systemic yeah. hypertension can have lv hypertrophy hypertrophy so, yes sir. so then what happened to the diastolic filling it will decrease sir. it will decrease because uh, uh, the uh, uh, because of the uh, reduced compliance of the lv the rapid filling of the left ventricle does not take place of course yes. a lot of filling take place during the atrial contraction Contact. and so in patients with systemic hypertension there can be elevation of the left atrial pressure in a patient with mitral regurgitation uh, there can be some uh, some degree of elevation of pressure during diastole also but yes. normally if we, without any other comorbid conditions if you look at mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation mitral stenosis gives rise to uniform elevation of the left atrial pressure during diastole as well as during systole while mitral regurgitation gives rise to elevation of pressure during diastole only and when the patient there is left ventricular failure then they, they develop uniform elevation of the left atrial pressure resulting in pulmonary arterial hypertension and so the, uh, the when the patient develops pulmonary venous congestion pulmonary arterial hypertension they have got the symptom of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea so paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea is a very frequent symptom of mitral stenosis while in a patient with mitral regurgitation if the patient is having paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea then you should start thinking that most likely the patient is having a significant lv dysfunction Are you able to get the point, Saroj? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So uh, another another situation where there can be symptoms related to the mitral regurgitation, an acute mitral regurgitation, where the the uh, the uh, left atrium is non-compliant and regurgitation into the left atrium can significantly increase the pressure uh, uh, during systole. Uh, it may even go up to that of the systole uh, systolic pressure in the aorta. And in those patients, there can be sometimes, and the pressure is directly transmitted to the pulmonary veins, and because of the regurgitant jet, which may re, which may enter the pulmonary veins, and that can give rise to sometimes pulmonary edema, because of the acute elevation of the uh, the pressure during the uh, systole, because of the non-compliant nature of the left atrium, as well as the regurgitant jet, because the left atrium is small, the regurgitant jet can directly enter the pulmonary veins, and the pulmonary veins pressure can uh, directly go up, that can result in pulmonary edema. So I could, uh, my, uh, my, uh, mitral regurgitation. Tell me with you a few conditions where you can get acute mitral regurgitation, Saroj. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, acute am I? Sir, acute am I, very good. You know, not enough to say acute am I. Inferior wall am I. Acute am I is associated with papillary, papillary, papillary muscle dysfunction. Dysfunction is not enough. You can put it as rupture. Rupture. Partial rupture of the papillary. The total rupture of the papillary muscle is, can, is, is most often non-compatible with the life. The patient can quickly develop pulmonary edema and die. But partial rupture of the papillary muscle. Yes. One, two. MVPM acute MVPM. Acute. What, what did you say? Acute MVPMR, sir. MVPMR. Acute uh, MVPMR due to a uh, caudal rupture, few caudal can rupture, and that can sometimes even sometimes a a a, a, a part of the uh, papillary muscle itself can rupture, rupture sometimes in patients with uh, um, MVP. So patients with MVP can suddenly deteriorate because of the rupture of caudal. Okay, right. Three. Acute infective endocarditis. Acute infective endocarditis. Four. Post BMB. Post BMB. Very good. So these are the four important reasons of acute mitral regurgitation. And sir, so we will have S four in acute uh, mitral regurgitation, while S four will not be there in uh, chronic MR. So that we can. Yeah, in chronic MR you get uh, uh, S um, S three. Yes. And in um, uh, acute mitral regurgitation, sometimes you can get uh, sometimes S3 as well as S4, but S4 is audible. Okay, right. Very good point. Yes. Okay. So uh, whenever the patient is having uh, significant symptoms, mitral stenosis is more likely than mitral regurgitation. Okay, right. Yes. What are the what are the mechanisms of pulmonary artery hypertension in mitral stenosis, Saroj? Why do why, why do these patients develop pulmonary artery hypertension? Mm. There are four stages of development of pulmonary artery hypertension in mitral stenosis. What are those four stages? Three, sorry, three stages. Sir, uh, one is uh, 
obliterative phase another is proliferative phase and uh, the first one sir it is due to congestion first one is what is the name given for the first one any one of you passive congestion very good passive pulmonary arterial hypertension when the pulmonary venous pressure goes up the patient the, the corresponding the pulmonary artery pressure has to go up how from the pressure data how will you make out whether there is only pulmonary venous hypertension pulmonary only passive congestion and there is no other uh, uh, contribution of pulmonary artery hypertension what is the feature of pulmonary venous hypertension uh, sorry the passive pulmonary venous hypertension pulmonary artery hypertension passive pulmonary artery hypertension what is the feature of passive pulmonary arterial hypertension anyone of you sir in the presence of an x ray sir first stage that not x ray looking at the hemodynamic data sir pulmonary capillary wedge pressure will be high but uh, sir that uh, uh, trans pulmonary pressure will be uh, normal seven yeah the pressure uh, pressure drop what yes. is the normal pressure drop sir so up to seven seven yes so very good seven up to seven the pulmonary uh, 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 bed vascular bed pressure drop is seven so when a patient is having a uh, uh, main pulmonary artery pressure and left atrial pressure difference remains only about 7 or 8 that means that the pulmonary artery pressure is purely due to pulmonary passive pulmonary venous hypertension the, the hypertension is only pulmonary uh, passive as long as the pressure drop remains 7 to 8 mm there is no other reaction because the uh, pulmonary venous pressure pulmonary artery pressure is elevated because the pulmonary venous pressure is going up because the blood is uh, if the blood is, blood is to flow from a uh, pulmonary artery to the pulmonary vein the pressure in the pulmonary artery has to get elevated then only the blood can flow from the pulmonary artery to pulmonary vein the first is the uh, passive pulmonary artery hypertension next one What sir, pulmonary vasoconstriction, sir, due to hypoxia. Ah, yeah. oh, pulmonary vasoconstriction. What is the name given? There is secondary my MS. My no, reactive and protective pulmonary artery hypertension. As a reaction to the elevation of pulmonary venous pressure, the uh, 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 the uh, the uh, arterioles, the small arterioles, can develop spasm, and uh, they, they, uh, that can contribute to pulmonary artery hypertension. Why it is known as uh, protective and reactive? Sir, it, 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 uh, because of this, sir, patient will uh, not have pulmonary edema. Yeah, uh, very good. Why the why the patient will not have pulmonary edema? Sir, because there is a uh, uh, vessel constriction mm -hmm. as a result of uh, uh, which the sir capillaries uh, pressure will not increase. No, no. It you is say at that, the post capillary uh, reason, sir. Yeah. Uh, the, no. The, 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 the because of the elevation of the pulmonary arterial pressure, the the pulmonary flow can come down, and thereby reducing the uh, blood reaching the left atrium, and the left atrial pressure can, can also come down. So, because of the vasoconstriction, the flow can come down, which can result in reduced pulmonary congestion, and the patient may not go in for pulmonary edema. So that is why it is known as. reactive and protective pulmonary arterial hypertension because of the development of pulmonary arterial or constriction okay very good and third phase the so obliterative changes the obliterative yeah, third is the obliterative pulmonary artery hypertension where fibrous tissue fibrosis fibrous tissue all result in pulmonary artery hypertension so in a patient with mitral stenosis there are three stages of development of pulmonary artery hypertension one the passive pulmonary artery hypertension to reactive and protective pulmonary artery vaso constriction and development of pulmonary artery hypertension and the obliterative pulmonary artery hypertension and so all these uh, uh, contribute to reduce pulmonary blood flow uh, which can bring down the uh, left atrial uh, filling that can bring down the left atrial pressure and the patient can become less symptomatic and the pulmonary edema development can be uh, prevented
So development of pulmonary artery hypertension to, to, to some extent is protective because that protects the patient from development of acute pulmonary edema. Okay, right, yes. Now go ahead with the history. History of present illness. Hmm. Patient developed exertional breathlessness, Neha class 2, during her second pregnancy, 24 years ago. Symptoms started during the Seven months of pregnancy, no history of PND. Oh, why is, uh, what is the uh, uh, re relevance of seventh month of pregnancy? So, uh, uh, CV ch uh, cardiovascular changes during pregnancy in the mid trimester. Uh, so, seventh month means uh, it is mid trimester still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, the maximum uh, maximum uh, volume hemodynamic changes are maximum around uh, twenty eight to thirty weeks. Yes. Sir. What are the hemodynamic changes of pregnancy? Sir, uh, uh, volume increases. The blood volume increases. Sir, heart rate increases. Heart rate increases. How much? Uh, by ten percent. So by ten percent. Ten to twelve. Usually, the heart rate increases by about ten to. 12 beats per minute. Okay, yes. System, systemic venous, uh, vascular resistance decreases. Yes, there is a, a peripheral vascular resistance comes down. Yes. And MAP is Correct. same. So main arterial pressure is remains almost same. Sir. Almost same or somewhat decreased. Which one? MAP. Mean arterial pressure. Mean arterial pressure. Mean, mean. mean. Uh -huh. uh, why, why it is so? When the pulmonary vascular resistance drops, how can the main pulmonary artery pressure remain the same? Sorry, how can the main systemic uh, pressure can remain the same? Venous. Uh, <coughs> Hemodynamically, what is uh, blood pressure? As a cardiac output into systemic vascular resistance. Yes, so here the systemic vascular comes down. And if you want to maintain the uh, blood pressure the same, what should happen? Cardiac, cardiac output, output increases. Yes, increases. cardiac output increases. Another thing that happens is cardiac output increases. Okay. Around 40 percent, 40 percent, by 40 percent. Uh, everything increases. I, I don't know whether it's 40 percent. It's usually 30 percent, uh, sir. Yeah. Eh? 30 percent. Yeah, it's around around, around 20, 20 to 30 percent is the increase in cardiac output. So, what are the significant hemodynamic changes are? Heart rate increases. Blood volume increases, uh, the cardiac output increases, uh, the blood pressure, the, the diastole blood pressure may come down and systemic vascular resistance comes down. Okay. What is the effect of these changes on mitral regurgitation and mitral stenosis? Saroj. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, mitral regurgitation will be uh, like uh, uh, sir, decreased, sir, uh, uh, favorable. In, uh, for which are, which are the uh, hemodynamic changes which are favorable and which are the hemodynamic changes which are not favorable for mitral regurgitation? Decrease in the peripheral uh, uh, pulmonary artery resistance will decrease hmm. the mitral regurgitation. Very good, yes. So, uh, and sir, uh, increase in the heart rate. Hmm. Uh, so uh, diastole will decrease, but the uh, systolic systolic time will be uh, not changing. So, sir, no, the systolic time will slightly increase, and the diastolic time comes down. Uh, sir, uh, then, sir, it will not favor. Uh, it will not favor. There may be some degree of uh, the, uh, the total volume of mitral regurgitation can increase. Okay, three. Body output. So, increased cardiac output uh, will decrease the mitral regurgitation? No, no, no. Cardiac output uh, to some extent. Because uh, when the blood volume increases, mitral regurgitation can increase, but the more of forward flow can decrease the mitral regurgitation. Okay, very good, yes. So, there are in mitral regurgitation, there are few changes which actually increase the mitral regurgitation. There are few, few things which actually decrease the mitral regurgitation. So, in pregnancy, usually mitral regurgitation is well tolerated. So what happens in mitral stenosis? Sir, in, sir, in uh, mitral stenosis, sir, uh, due to tachycardia, the diastolic time will decrease. As a result, sir, mitral stenosis will be more aggravated. Yes, one. Radiate. Two. Blood volume increase? Yes, sir. That will also, uh, sir, uh, 
मोर पलमोनरी वेनस कंजेशन और सर पलमोनरी कैपिलरी वेज प्रेशर विल इंक्रीज Okay, so uh, the uh, the uh, blood volume in increase will also result in more of pulmonary congestion, pulmonary venous pressure can go up in my testosterone. Okay, the three stroke uh, decrease in stroke uh, decrease in peripheral resistance. And then uh, venous return will decrease. Then may not may not decrease peripheral when the peripheral if the heart is able to pump out more blood then the venous return will be still retained but may not may be neutral because uh, uh, the, the patient can uh, uh, have a better stroke volume and may not may may be neutral so all put together two very important changes which can occur cardiac output increase stroke volume uh, uh, the increase in the blood volume and increase in the heart rate. Three uh, hemodynamic changes are detrimental for mitral stenosis, and patients with mitral stenosis sometimes can become symptomatic during pregnancy. And this usually occurs by about 28 to 30 to 32 weeks of pregnancy. Okay, right? Yes. Go ahead. No history of PND. No edema of legs at that time. No palpitation, exertional syncope, or cardiac pain. No history of claudication of upper or lower limbs. she consulted a doctor who told her that she has a heart lesion and can develop complications during delivery hence she consulted a cardiologist who put her on regular medications and she became asymptomatic and had an uneventful normal vaginal delivery okay so what are the possibilities so here the no history of pnd uh, this uh, that whether the um, patient has got uh, either left heart left sided valvular lesion either not there or patient has got uh, like sir mitral valve disease with asd mitral valve mitral stenosis with either subtle defect can patient can become less symptomatic very good yes what are the conditions in which my patient with mitral stenosis can become less symptomatic Sir, uh, one if patient have a ASD, Very or good. sir, patient has gone into a right heart failure or pulmonary artery hypertension has developed. Very good. Sir, in tricuspid stenosis patients. Yeah, patient has developed the right right side heart lesions. So well, these are the few situations where the patients with the um, uh, 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 mitral stenosis can become less symptomatic. They are if the patient is having associated ASD. If the patient is having, say, say, developing development of severe pulmonary artery hypertension, and three patients are developing associated right heart lesion. So these are the. So if you are thinking of mitral stenosis, excuse me, sir. Eh? Yes. You know. The severe pH in pregnancy will not be tolerated. Okay, man. Severe pH in pregnancy will not be tolerated. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. No, no. I am not saying about pregnancy. The severe pH in pregnancy. Now, uh, what I am saying is that what are the conditions in which an patient with mitral stenosis can become less symptomatic, especially in relation to paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. So these are the three things you should consider: associated ASD, uh, development of pulmonary artery hypertension. Three patients are having associated right heart lesion, especially uh, tricuspid stenosis. Patients with tri uh, tricuspid regurgitation also can be can have a Beneficial effect as far as the pulmonary congestion is concerned, especially mitral uh, tricuspid stenosis can have a significant impact on the uh, 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 mitral uh, mitral valve symptoms. Why the right heart uh, lesions can can prevent symptoms in mitral stenosis, Saroj? Yes, sir. So the, uh, this is because sir uh, the. Um, Uh, proximal uh, lesion generally dominates, sir. Yeah, uh, not dominate. It will manifest first. If there are two lesions, the proximal lesion will manifest. Yeah, if there is an ASD and VSD, ASD will manifest. If there is mitral uh, stenosis and uh, uh, tricuspid stenosis, tricuspid stenosis will manifest. So, how can the tricuspid stenosis protect against symptoms of mitral stenosis? What is your name? Somebody is answering. What is your name? Sir, Doctor Subhasis. Doctor Subhasis Das. Subhasis, okay, right. Yes. Where are you from? 
sir from bhubneswar sir bhubneswar odisha apollo bhubneswar oh very good very good okay i think you seem to be very good okay um, you should discuss one one one, one case in, in the next class so that you will become more confident very good i think you are answering very well okay yes so saraj tell me how the uh, right heart lesions can protect against the symptoms of my uh, uh, mitral stenosis uh, especially so there there will be delay in the development of uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension in these patients why 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 it is so what happens to a patient with a tricuspid stenosis and tricuspid regurgitation what happens to a normal person when he exercises what happens to cardiac output what happens to left ventricular filling and all in a normal person when you exercise what happens to cardiac output what happens to uh, uh, cardiac filling right left both so during exercise the uh, uh, cardiac output will increase sir. significantly increases mm. uh, by both increase in the stroke volume stroke volume and force uh, increase in the heart rate. tachycardia yes the heart rate okay in a patient with uh, uh, my, uh, patient of mitral stenosis when you exercise and when the Uh, so cardiac output and the blood uh, venous return increases what happens to pulmonary congestion it increases increases and what happens to the patient patient will become more symptomatic sir more symptomatic patient will have excess of breathlessness uh, during exertion the patient will develop breathlessness and if it is severe the patient can even go for pulmonary edema okay in a patient with associated right heart right heart lesion what happens So then, sir, uh, flow from the right heart to, to the pulmonary that will be not markedly increased. It will no, not it increase. Can, it can increase. Then, why? Uh, when the patient exercises in a uh, patient with associated right heart lesion, what increases? What will be the same to other patients? Sir, uh, more, more, sir, edema. Yeah. Right heart failure signs. Uh, like patient will, patient will develop uh, systemic congestion. Yes, and these patients can complain of fatigue. Of course, fatigue will be there because of the low cardiac output. They yes, may complain of right hypochondrial pain. Yes, sir. Uh, congestion. Liver congestion. Congestion. Liver congestion. These patients can complain of uh, of uh, 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 right hypochondrial pain. And some of these patients who are intelligent enough can sometimes can feel the prominent pulsations in the neck. and they may say that they they are feeling some pulsations in the neck so in a patient with right heart disease uh, when there is associated tricuspid stenosis tricuspid regurgitation in a patient with mitral stenosis the symptom of left heart symptoms will be seen the left heart symptoms will come down no pulmonary congestion no breathlessness but instead patient can have systemic congestion patient can have right hypochondrial pain feeling of neck pulsations and of course Uh, the pulmonary edema, the, the systemic edema cannot suddenly go off, but the right right hypochondrial pain is a symptom. Many of these patients with uh, uh, with uh, uh, right side valve can uh, can complain of when they exercise, but they are protected from development of acute pulmonary edema. Okay, so uh, the when a patient with mitral stenosis, when they are become they become less symptomatic, you must always think of three possibilities: one, associated ASD. Two, the patient has developed significant pulmonary artery hypertension, thereby has gone in for right heart failure. And three, the patient has got evidence of associated <laughs> right-sided valvular lesion, tricuspid regurgitation, tricuspid stenosis. Okay, right. Yes. All these things. Uh, CCP also same, na sir. If patient has CCP with MS, then also he will be protected. Constructive pericarditis. Constructive pericarditis with uh, to, to, to a large extent because in constructive pericarditis, uh, they but they, they usually increase their heart rate and then they can increase their uh, to, to to some extent they can increase their cardiac output and uh, these patients can become symptomatic because usually the left atrial pressure is already elevated. On top of that, the patient is having mitral stenosis; it will be further elevated. And when they exercise, they actually the cardiac output can increase and the patient can become significantly symptomatic. So there the, uh, the the hemodynamics is different. Already the uh, the the 
congestion of the the, the, the liver the, uh, the pulmonary congestion is due to two reasons one constriction of pericardial pericardial constriction elevate the left atrial pressure mitral stenosis elevate the left atrial pressure and during exercise there can be increase in the cardiac output because the right side is normal so there can be increase in the cardiac output so uh, the behavior of constricted pericardial this will be different from patients who have got associated uh, the right side evaluation so one more thing here so here no pnd and no edema first to open here's got no pnd and no edema okay uh, uh. so that is uh, that makes uh, so patient is not in right heart failure so i think that makes the possibility of ast with mitral stenosis more likely yes sir. because in ast with mitral stenosis even without uh, uh, development of any pulmonary artery hypertension or any systemic uh, systemic uh, problems the patient will not have any pulmonary congestion ra is very compliant sir uh, ra and rv both are very compliant yes sir and so the then in a patient with uh, uh, asd what, what will decide the left atrial pressure sir uh, left uh, left ventricular end diastolic pressure in a patient with asd with yes. mitral stenosis oh with mitral stenosis in a patient with uh, uh, a uh, mitral stenosis with asd what will be the what pressure will control the left atrial pressure very nice story anybody the rp rp end diastolic pressure rp diastolic pressure will control the left atrial pressure because the, the uh, where, uh, if there is an obstruction to the mitral valve if the blood flow cannot flow to the left ventricle uh, since because of an asd the left atrium will decompress into the right ventricle and hence the right ventricular uh, pressure will decide the right ventricular diastolic pressure will decide the left atrial pressure so that is why they don't they don't develop congestion they don't go in for pulmonary edema because uh, the pressure is controlled uh, the, they can easily decongest to the right ventricle through the asd okay so in a patient with asd with mitral stenosis the uh, left atrial pressure is controlled by the left ventricular diastolic pressure okay right go ahead is, is it clear to you gara is it clear to you, uh, this also how the uh, right ventricular the uh, pressure is controlling the left left atrial pressure in a patient with mitral stenosis with the atrial septal defect yes sir yes sir the the as the left atrial pressure goes up the the left atrium has got the capacity to decompress to the uh, right side uh, and the uh, so right ventricle being a very compliant chamber it can receive more and more blood but when the right ventricle starts failing then the left atrial pressure can go up because the left atrial pressure is depending upon the right ventricular pressure okay right go ahead. so i think we have to keep this possibility in our mind that patient may be having associated asd okay right go ahead uh, after the delivery she became asymptomatic and her medicines were reduced however on heavy exertion she used to develop mild breathlessness which did not interfere her normal life as housewife 10 years ago she developed irregular palpitation and she developed class 2 neha exertional breathlessness no pnd no hemoptysis she was getting edema of both the feet she consulted the cardiologist who put her on medications including the blood thinning medications she was told that she has to has a narrow valve and needs balloon treatment she underwent but balloon procedure uh, eight years ago and subsequently felt very much better for the past three years she again developed exertional breathlessness this time she had edema of both the feet she noticed prominent pulsation in the neck and her medi uh, medications were stepped up and she felt better she is on urine pill black thinning pill and two other medications name of which she does not remember okay so from this uh, from the present history uh, what are the possibilities you can say now we have already considered uh, yes sir excuse me sir uh, hello sir uh, 
uh, NYHA class two, then uh, there is no no need to mention PND also. No PND is NYHA class three or four, but NYHA class two PND will not come. So if many authorities feel that PND should stand separate, because oh. uh, because uh, uh, sometimes patients with the PND uh, who had one or two episodes of PND during daytime they may be only class two symptomatic. So now most of the authorities feel that PND should be separately mentioned, and that because otherwise PND means uh, according to the New York Heart Association classification, it is a breathlessness occurring at rest, and it should be class four. So uh, nowadays mostly people believe that PND can separate, remain separate, and uh, the other symptoms of New York Heart Association classification can be based on other symptoms. So class two can happen, and then you can mention no PND also. Okay, right. So to uh, discuss the uh, well, let's go to the past history and then we'll complete the then uh, we can go to the history discussion of the story. Yes. The history suggests him of rheumatic fever at the age of eleven years, and she took monthly injections for three years and discontinued on the advice of a doctor. She was told that she has mild affection of her heart valves. She remained asymptomatic, and her first childbirth. 28 years ago was uneventful no history of diabetes mellitus or systemic hypertension her birth was uh, full term normal delivery and no heart disease was detected at that time mm. family history so should i go yeah, yeah. Uh, both parents alive no illness siblings do not have heart disease two daughters no heart disease habits no special habits Okay, now discuss the story and uh, put your diagnosis, uh, uh, the possibilities, and then we'll go to the physical physical findings. So, from the history, uh, it looks that patient uh, 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 is uh, having uh, rheumatic heart disease. Yes. Possibly, sir, yeah, vital. Yeah, definitely, she is having rheumatic. Yes, sir. Uh, some uh, possibly rheumatic fever, and then also she has undergone balloon. Yes, sir. Sir, previous slide uh, better, sir. If we can see. The okay. continue. Right. Uh, sir, uh, sir, here, uh, sir, she is uh, uh, having uh, most probably, sir, mitral stenosis uh, for which, uh, sir, balloon mitral valvotomy was done. And uh, again, sir, uh, re stenosis has occurred after the um, uh, eight years. Okay. So she might have had undergone a uh, balloon mitral valvuloplasty. And which must have been successful because she became she she uh, improved significantly and subsequently she might have gone for restenosis. Very good. Yes, yes. Sir. sir. The most important uh, two uh, things that uh, must be uh, having some uh, associated lesion is that sir she is not having PND. Okay. So sir uh, again sir. Uh, Maybe sir, patient cancer number two. Sir, she has uh, uh, developed uh, this uh, atrial fibrillation uh, oh. also. So, oh. so we have to uh, take into consideration uh, that uh, patient is having ASD also okay. uh, because uh, she is in we have, we, have to, we, have, we have to we have to think of a uh, condition where the uh, the the, uh, the uh, left heart symptoms. So, so uh, due to pulmonary congestion in a patient with mitral stenosis is not there. So condition you are considering is one associated ASD, yes. Or sir, associated uh, tricuspid stenosis. Yes, sir, right, 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 right side of the valve or heart disease yes. like tricuspid stenosis, tricuspid regurgitation, yes. Are you, are you thinking considering uh, development of pulmonary artery hypertension? Uh, sir, I will say it's, it's a rheumatic heart disease, severe MS leading on to PH and right heart symptoms. Sir. I will not go with AST or TS because there was no initial history of any right side symptoms. So, it is a severe MS leading on to uh, PH and right, uh, right, right heart symptoms. That's it. She developed symptoms when she became pregnant. So, uh, uh, the, that is the time but, uh, her lesion was detected. The, and uh, subsequently also she re remained quite asymptomatic. See, she had uh, exertion breathlessness 24 years ago. At the she time, was on treatment, sir. She was on treatment. 
Oh, but then the treatment was in, in between it was reduced and uh, she brought down her treatment to significantly to lower levels and she started developing symptoms when she started developing when she developed a complication yes a complication uh, Ir irregular palpitations so she developed atrial fibrillation and that has resulted in development of symptoms i agree with you that uh, but uh, absence of pnd i would consider that uh, if the patient was gone for uh, severe permanent arterial hypertension, I would have uh, thought of uh, that the patient should give a history of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. So I will keep that uh, slightly lower in the list. I, uh, uh, my and sir, last three years, sir, it looks that uh, the patient has gone into uh, uh, right heart failure as well. Yeah. So. So, what, what does that tell you? What is your uh, order of preference? Sir, uh, if, uh, if patient has got a atrial septal defect, uh, ASD, then sir, uh, uh, sir, RV failure. And if patient has got a TS or TR, uh, then also, sir, uh, uh, patient is having edema in the la for last three years yes. so sir uh, it has become significantly increased the right side lesions also okay so both the possibilities are there out of these two um, in your mind which one are you planning to give uh, first choice the so first ms with asd ms with your reasons so reasons that uh, sir, for ms sir it is clear cut history of rheumatic heart disease and all and sir for asd sir patient's age 52 years so she has developed uh, um, uh, atrial fibrillation also and uh, sir, right sided heart, heart failure has uh, developed yeah. uh, the sequence of events that uh, has happened to the patient where the patient initially was not significantly symptomatic or a period of time patient developed atrial fibrillation became symptomatic and uh, uh, now the patient is presenting with right side heart failure can go can, can very well go consistent with atrial septal defect and what has happened to a shunt in a patient with atrial septal defect when there is mitral stenosis so it will be left to right it's left to right but it will be the, uh, the same as in a normal person or decrease uh, compared to a normal person or increased compared to a normal person what is the pattern of left the shunt will increase shunt will increase because there is a mitral obstruction the shunt will increase and these patients can become symptomatic uh, earlier than in a no in an otherwise normal person with asd so uh, the the uh, the, uh, the evidence that the patient has gone in for right heart failure can go consistent with the diagnosis of uh, mitral stenosis with atrial septal defect okay so indutin macker syndrome is your first diagnosis okay so, but one thing is not going with that she noticed prominent pulsation in the neck okay. sir in asd uh, when right heart failure occurs uh, sir i'm not sure whether prominent pulsation but, we will get sir sir excuse me sir ah. Sir, uh, if ASD was there, then uh, balloon treatment uh, doing, sir, uh, that, that is going against the ASD, sir. So, yes, yes. It, 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 it was mainly a severe MS uh, and now it is very well with the natural history of MS at 24 years history. So, I will still put my first MS severe MS leading on to uh, complication of MS that is uh, AF, then PAH and right heart failure. So, that will be, I will not be thinking more on ASD or TS. Okay, so you are not thinking of ASD because the patient uh, did not go into any other procedure other than uh, just balloon uh, valvular plasty, yes. which was uh, an inadequate treatment. If the patient had ASD, uh, uh, the total treatment should have been an ASD closer with the opening yes. of over mitral valve. Well. Uh, okay, right. I agree with your point that another if there was an ASD, something would have been done. But uh, in a patient, uh, can you close the ASD alone? Uh, no, sir, we have to see the pressures uh, on the table. We have to see the occlusion pressures on the table. We have to see no, you, you, can, uh, you can open up the mitral valve and also close the ASD. That is possible. But you should not do only ASD closure because if you close the ASD, the patient can quickly go in for pulmonary edema because yes, already, uh, the uh, outlet through the ASD is closed and the patient can develop LA, LA pressure elevation and can go, go for pulmonary edema. So, balloon mitral plasty was done, but nothing else was told and nothing else was done. So, that is the point against the diagnosis of associated 
Uh, yes, yes. I agree with you. Okay. So, what is your point against uh, this being a tricuspid valve disease, uh, Gaurav? Sir, there is no previous history of any right heart symptoms. Sir. There is no previous history of right heart symptoms. So, no, see, uh, uh, patients with uh, patients who go in for significant uh, right cell valvular disease, usually if you look at the involvement of rheumatic heart disease, which valve is affected first? So first, uh, mitral only, so most common is mitral. Yes, then? Then aortic, then aortic, then aortic, then tricuspid and last uh, is pulmonary, very less yeah. So actually it is a mitral, aortic, uh, tricuspid and pulmonary, pulmonary. So it's quite possible that she have, uh, the tricuspid valve involvement was quite delayed. And now only she has developed severe tricuspid stenosis. Why can't you think that way? Sir, my point is the natural history of MS, sir, it is all fitting very well, sir. It's 24 is the long history duration is there and post BMD also 8 years. Now she has developed for past 3 years only she has no right sided symptoms. That is why I am more in favor of left sided disease causing on to the right side rather than the right side primary disease. So, uh, then uh, how, will you, how will you explain uh, that? How will you explain uh, on, on second point, sir, 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 second point, she may have developed that uh, significant TS now. So second wall involvement now. That can be a second possibility. So, you think that the first possibility is the development of pulmonary artery hypertension and that has protected her from development of pulmonary edema and she has now gone in for a right heart period. Yes, and second possibility now she has developed a uh, second wall that is the tricuspid wall involvement. Okay. That can be yeah, so you think that second possibility is tricuspid valve disease and which is protected uh, from the element of pulmonary edema. Uh, and you are not considering ASD at all? ASD I am not considering. ASD I am not considering. Sir, what is your argument against sir, the argument sir, that we sir, uh, sir, this patient first sir, coming from mitral stenosis and tricuspid valve disease of rheumatic etiology will be my first diagnosis. Oh, you are now going back to that. So, mitral stenosis with tricuspid valve disease is the first diagnosis. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, the the cause is because, sir. Oh, because uh, you were you initially saying that mitral stenosis is the ASD. Why did you uh, change? Sir, yes, I changed because, sir, uh, one point, sir, in case of ASD, sir, uh, so much of edema development, edema, sir, she has developed significant edema. Hmm. And sir, sir, uh, this one, sir, neck pulsation, sir, I am a little uh, worried about this uh, prominent pulsation in the neck, sir. Uh, yeah. oh, well, why, why, do, why the prominent pulsations occur in, uh, in tricuspid valve disease? Sir, because sir, either tricuspid stenosis, then sir, A wave will be prominent and if it is tricuspid regurgitation, the B wave will be prominent. But this patient is in atrial fibrillation, so how can you get A, a prominent? Uh, Yes, sir. Uh, then, sir, uh, tricuspid regurgitation, uh, organic tricuspid regurgitation and mitral stenosis, sir. Yeah. So, uh, no, you can say that the patient can have associated for tricuspid valve disease, both stenosis and regurgitation. Yes, sir. It can give rise to very prominent pulsations in the neck. And yes, the, the patient's yes, observation that she has prominent pulsations in the neck is a strong point in favor of associated. Tricuspid valve disease. Okay. In patients with ASD also, they can develop uh, pulsations in the neck when the patients have developed right heart failure, but uh, and they can have associated tricuspid regurgitation. How can patients with uh, ASD develop tricuspid regurgitation, Saroj? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, lone ASD or sir, mitos, with mitral stenosis? Uh, either way. Sir, uh, in case of uh, uh, ASD patient can develop because of uh, uh, tricuspid regurgitation because of the uh, sir, uh, 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 ring dilatation of the tricuspid valve. Very good. Be there are tricuspid valve as the more and more blood flows uh, because of the shunt from right atrium to right ventricle, the right ventricle dilates, right atrium dilates, and the mitral analysis, uh, the tricuspid analysis becomes bigger and bigger resulting in significant tricuspid regurgitation. So, tricuspid regurgitation can happen and if the patient is not associated with RV failure, the right atrial pressure can go up, the patient can have tricuspid regurgitation and they can have prominent pulsations in the neck. But I agree with you that the pulsations associated with the right, right uh, uh, tricuspid valve disease like organic tricuspid stenosis or organic tricuspid regurgitation will be much more striking than in a patient with atrial septal defect.
So if you take that as a very important point, I agree fully agree with you that we have to consider the possibility of associated tricuspid valve disease, and patient must be having a associated mitral mitral valve disease also. So uh, are you still considering ASD or you are not considering? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, uh, second. Sir, microstenosis with lutein bacteria will be second, sir. First will be, sir, uh, microstenosis and tricuspid valve disease. Hmm. Why did you put second uh, ASD and not pulmonary artery hypertension? Sir, because there uh, is no history of PND. No history of PND. Okay, that's a very good point. Because uh, even though patients with uh, pulmonary artery hypertension can, uh, can be without, uh, without PND, but before the development of pulmonary artery hypertension, there is a phase. Uh, during which they can have few episodes of PND and then they go in for pulmonary artery hypertension and then the PND may disappear. So absence of PND, I will consider as a point which ought for the development of uh, only pure pulmonary artery hypertension that is protecting the patient from development of the left heart symptoms. So I also agree with you that uh, but the ASD uh, from the story that nothing more was done to the inbred receptor. They are just a balloon mitral was done. Nothing more was done to the uh, inbred receptor. That makes me think that probably the inbred receptor defect was not there. So I will consider it as a defect as the as the third in the possibility. First, I would consider for I agree with you that uh, uh, tricuspid valve disease associated pulmonary hypertension and AST also will, I will not rule out, rule out but I will keep it low in the list because nothing was done by the uh, the uh, interventionist nothing was done to look after the defect if it was there so it is a defect I will consider low in the list third one okay right yes now coming to physical findings any other point uh, uh, do you think that you can be cardiomyopathy Gavirav? Do you think it's a cardiomyopathy, sir? Uh, no, sir. History is very clear. Oh, history, sir, history is very clear, sir. So very clear, sir. No. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. On examination, sir. On examination, a normal bilge, no external external developmental anomalies, not dyspnea, no clubbing or cyanosis, no pallor, pitting edema of both the feet, mostly around the ankles. Cardiovascular system examination, extra picordial examination, pulse 80 per minute, irregularly irregular, varying in volume, all pulses felt, no special character, vessel wall not thickened, no radio radial or radio femoral delay, pulse apex deficit 8. What is the uh, limit required for uh, 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 diagnosing atrial fibrillation? Sir, if heart rate uh, 100 and more, then sir, 10 at least. Okay. If it is heart rate is less? Less than sir, 10 percent, uh, sir. I am not sure, sir. Yeah. It should be more than 8. For you to consider a pulse the apex deficit as important, it should be more than 8. 8 is not enough, actually. It should be 9, 10, something like that. So, 8 is uh, borderline. So, uh, what are the uh, situations where you can get pulse apex deficit? VPCs, multiple VPCs. Very good. Multiple ectopics. It can be supraventricular or ventricular. You can get, uh, if there are multiple VP, uh, VPCs or SVPCs, sometimes you can get uh, pulse apex deficit. Okay, go ahead. Blood pressure? Yes, sir. Blood pressure 110 by 75 mm of HG in right upper limb, right lower limb, systolic blood pressure 120 mm of HG. JVP. Uh, Me? Uh, yes. uh, sorry, sir. Sir, sir, one doubt, uh, sir, shall we explain everything with uh, one lesion or shall we put, uh, shall we bring on two lesions? That is one doubt I was just thinking. No, both of uh, see, your, your diagnosis also is well, well uh, accepted because you are saying that mitosinosis, pulmonary artery hypertension and uh, yeah. uh, 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 tricuspid regurgitation, right heart uh, failure. So that, that's, we are not uh, ruling out dying, strongly feel that that should be retained. Only odd point is that no history of PND, that is all. Because these patients also, I would expect to have few episodes of PND before they develop significant pulmonary artery hypertension. Sir, with, uh, sir, with class 2 symptoms, I was not suspecting PND also, sir. I told you before, class 2 symptoms, I was not expecting PND also. Class 2 symptoms, uh, 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 the class 2 symptom and PND has to be uh, looked at separately. Patients with who have class 2 symptoms sometimes can have one or two episodes of PND also. Because the PND is, a, uh, is a, the mechanism is entirely different from the usual 
uh, exertion, exertion related to symptoms in, uh, during the daytime, daytime activities. At night, what is the what is the uh, mechanism of PND and why in right heart failure the PND becomes less? Saruj? Yes, sir. Well, how does the PND get uh, there is no PND when there is right heart, right heart symptoms in a patient with left heart disease? Why? Sir, PND develops, uh, uh, the mechanism of the PND is sir, usually after sir, uh, two to three hours of going to the bed, sir, uh, uh, the patient develops severe uh, uh, shortness of breath and air hunger and then sir, the, he goes to the window and uh, uh, sits up and uh, dang, uh, sir, leg uh, dangling down and uh, then uh, he gets relieved. Sir, uh, for this, sir, uh, pulmonary, um, sir, there is an increase in the um, venous return uh, after the patient goes into sleep. Sir, so if uh, there is a, uh, a right-sided lesion present, this is protective. Sir, the pulmonary uh, uh, vascular bed will not be flooded. Yeah. So you know, what you have to say is that in a patient, uh, you know, the uh, the paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea occurs because of the uh, redistribution of the interstitial fluid from the interstitial to the vasculature, thereby increasing the venous return onto the right side of the heart. When the venous return increases to the right side of the heart, if the right side also is a defective and the right heart, right side of the heart is not able to extra volume of blood, the patient is in heart failure and the right heart failure, then what will happen to the cardiac output or what will happen to the output from the right ventricle from the right side? It will not increase. Increase. The, the, the extra volume coming to the right side cannot be handled by the right ventricle. So if the patient is having a right side lesion, then the, the uh, cardiac output or the stroke volume or the uh, blood pumped out from the right ventricle because of the increased venous return will not happen and that, that will protect the patient from development of pulmonary edema. But at the same time, because of the increased uh, venous return, the patient can go for systemic congestion. So, when the, if the patient is having a if the patient is having a significant right side lesion, that will protect the patient from development of pulmonary edema. That is because the right side is not able to increase the stroke volume. So, will actually redistribution happen when there is so much of uh, right sided uh, pressures, uh, like uh, already hydrostatic pressure, and that will be more uh, because of increased right sided uh, right sided uh, pressure. The, the, that also is another point that uh, the uh, redistribution may, may be limited. Of course, there is a, some decrease in the systemic venous congestion when the patient uh, lies down from the standing position. That can result in some degree of fluid redistribution, but uh, that will be very marginal. And also, uh, the whatever is the fluid distribution, uh, redistribution of case, that will not increase the, 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 uh, the output from the right ventricle and the pulmonary congestion will not take place. So, uh, multifactorial right heart failure results in less of fluid redistribution, uh, the, the output from the RV cannot increase, the pulmonary congestion cannot take place, less of, the blood cannot come into the left side cannot be increased, all will result in protecting the patient from development of pulmonary edema. Okay, right. yes. So, in a right heart lesion, uh, the, the pulmonary edema does not happen because of two important mechanisms. One, the redistribution is limited. And two, the uh, RV cannot increase the output. Okay, okay go ahead, JVP. JVP. Mean JVP elevated up to middle of the neck, 15 centimeter above the sternal angle. Prominent V wave, wide descent has a slow fall, and the JVP significantly engorges on inspiration. What happens to the uh, AV in atrial fibrillation? Sir, A wave will be absent. What about X descent? Sir, X descent. Sir, only X dash will be there. Only X dash will be there. Very good. Yes. <laughs> In a, uh, X descent has got two components. What are the two components for X descent? Sir, X and X descent. 
Yeah, x and x dash, which sometimes yeah. we uh, both put, put together, we get the uh, x dash. And yes. what, what are the mechanisms of x and what is the mechanism of x dash? Saroj? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, X is due to tricuspid relaxation, sir. X is due to the tricuspid wall stretch. Pulling, pulling of the tricuspid bands okay. causes the X descent. X descent. Yes. Initial part of the X descent is because of the atrial relaxation, which is not there in atrial fibrillation. But the second half of the uh, uh, X descent or X dash is because of the public down of the tricuspid valve, it, it is there. So you may be able to see a, a small X, X descent or X dash even in patients with atrial fibrillation. But in patients with atrial fibrillation, sometimes X dash may not be, uh, may be absent. In what condition is X dash absent? Sir, are we failure? The failure will not uh, uh, remove X-dash. regurgitation? Tricuspid regurgitation. In tricuspid regurgitation, X-dash will not be there because of the regurgitation into the right, right atrium, the, uh, the X-dash will be practically uh, abolished. X-dash will be there, but X-dash will not be there. Are you getting the point, uh, Saroj? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. But tell me conditions where you can get prominent B waves, four conditions, four or five. So, tricuspid regurgitation. Tricuspid regurgitation. Yes, sir, uh, ostium primum ASD. Ostium primum ASD. ASD with MR. Yes, sir. What or maybe the mechanism of MR? ASD with MR, yes. Jarbo defect, sir. Jarbo defect. Jarbo defect, yes. yes Very sir. good. Uh, and sir, RSOV2. RSOV2. RA. 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 RSOV to right atrium. Okay. ASD with mitral regurgitation. Beg your pardon? ASD with mitral regurgitation. That is just mentioned. ASD with mitral regurgitation. Any other condition where there can be a prominent V wave? RV failure. RV failure, we have to try this to regurgitation. Okay, I think these are the four important okay. where you can get a, a, a prominent V waves in the neck. One is uh, uh, in a patient with regurgitation, uh, patient with the AST with mitral regurgitation, patient with the garbodi shunt, uh, the LV to RA shunt, and in patients associated with rupture sinus of alcohol to the right. Okay, right. Yes. So, sir, here dominant V wave and white descent has a slow fall and JVP significantly angles on inspiration. So these three points, uh, three different mechanisms. So one looks that the patient has got a significant tricuspid regurgitation, also tricuspid stenosis and sir, RV failure. Now you need not begin RV failure because uh, uh, sir, during inspiration when there is a increase in the venous return to the right atrium. Because if the patient is having associated tricuspid stenosis, it can, yes, can stagnate and that can result in engorgement of the yes, sir. jugular vein pressure. So, um, you did not bring in RV failure because uh, uh, even without that, you can explain. Okay, from the JEP, uh, you feel that the patient may be having associated tricuspid regurgitation, may be having tricuspid stenosis. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, okay, right. Uh, sir, ASD can be rule out from now or uh, still considering ASD? Saroj? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. ASD, sir, uh, uh, we will uh, not consider now, sir. No, because, because of the... Why are you not considering ASD? Sir, uh, uh, mm, sir, it's so prominent, sir, uh, 15 centimeters. And, sir, a prominent V wave. Sir, in ASD, sir, uh, the V wave will be not that prominent, so much prominent. In the ASD alone is not enough because the, that yeah. in the white descent has got a slow fall. Yes, sir. That also, sir, we cannot explain so, with ASD. So the, so the, since the white descent is slow, that definitely indicates that there is a mitral uh, tricuspid well obstruction. Stenosis. So the, that cannot explain. That cannot be explained by ASD. So if you are bringing in bringing in ASD, then you have to bring in another lesion that the patient may be having associated tricuspid stenosis. That is too much. So I think or post BMD ASD or post BMD ASD. 
പോസിബിലിറ്റി <laughs> 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 because that is the most important situation where there can be a slow white descent okay from the, at this point we will consider that the patient must be having tricuspid stenosis tricuspid regurgitation and most likely must be having mitral stenosis because the patient has undergone a wound seizure okay yes okay the cardiac examination inspection and palpation apex beat is felt at the fifth intercostal space 0.5 cm outside the midclavicular line no special character no sounds or the chill felt at apex left parasternal lift present what does that mean what will happen to parasternal lift in a patient with tricuspid regurgitation tricuspid stenosis so it should not be left parasternal lift What will happen to apex beat in a patient with mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis? So it will depend which one is the predominant patient. Very good, very good. In a patient with uh, um, mitral regurgitation being dominant, you can sometimes get ten percent. Hyperdynamic. You may get a cardiac enlargement, and also uh, even a forceful apex. Similarly. The uh, in a patient with tricuspid stenosis, tricuspid regurgitation, which will give rise to parasternal lift. The tricuspid regurgitation. Regurgitation. So presence of parasternal lift will tell you that probably of the two lesions you are considering, tricuspid regurgitation is uh, dominant. Dominant. Okay, right. Yes. Are we outflow pulsation felt in the third intercostal space? Yes. Close to the sternum. What the what does that mean? so it it is a flow through the rv outflow or ls or position special rv outflow of when does the rv outflow dilate yes pulmonary stenosis no 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 in pulmonary outflow will not dilate pulmonary hypertension no 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 what are the conditions in which rv outflow can dilate one is abstreme one is abstreme uh, what is the mechanism so um, uh, there the sir inflow is uh, and uh, not uh, formed well It is not not formed well. Uh, inflow is reduced because it, uh, part of the uh, inflow portion has been atrialized, resulting yes, in a smaller inflow, and hence the uh, the uh, the volume of blood coming to the right ventricle is um, stored in the outflow region, and which dilates. Okay, right. Yes. yes so the inflow becoming less uh, less uh, uh, the capacity of the inflow coming down can result in outflow getting dilated. Example: Epstein's anomaly. Another example. Are we outflow pulsations prominent? Any condition where are we body can be obliterated and are we outflow can get dilated? EMF sir. EMF very good. Are we EMF? In are we EMF the the body can be obliterated and that can result in are we outflow dilatation? Very good. Third, third cause for RV or pulsations. The pulmonary regurgitation. Okay, pulmonary regurgitation can occur. You get any condition where there is significant RV volume overload. The RV body can be dilated, and when there is more volume of overload is happening, then RV outflow can dilate. As can happen in patients with ASD, ASD. patients with tricuspid regurgitation, patients with pulmonary significant pulmonary regurgitation. Sometimes patients with postoperative tetralogy fellow, you may be able to get an RV outflow pulsations because of very significant tric pulmonary regurgitation. Secondary to the patch repair of the RV outflow. 
So uh, all conditions where there can be significant volume overload of the right ventricle, the first is the initial RV body dilates and that will be followed by the RV outflow dilatation. And RV outflow pulsations are best felt in the third left ventricle space. What is the other pulsation that sometimes you can feel in the, the third left ventricle space? Saroj? Yes, sir. Uh, well, uh, pulsation uh, from the left atria in case of mitral regurgitation. Yes, transmitter pulsations from the left atria. How will you differentiate? So timing is important. Yes. One is uh, pre, uh, one is systolic, and another is sir uh, pre. What is pre? Pre diastolic. Eh? Pre -di no, no, sir. No, no, sir. Uh, yes, pre systolic, sir. There is a new terminology. No, sir. I am confused, sir. Uh, both systolic we will see sir LA pulsations sir. both after systolic R V outflow pulsations and yes, LA pulsations are both systolic but what is the difference apex after apical apex beat we will feel that is LA pulsation sir yes uh, no no which systole you will which systole you will feel the, uh, the that LA is with MR sir that is the which systole you will feel then it is MR after systole Okay. If you are feeling with the systole pulsations, the RV pulse that RV outflow pulsation, then it is means it is a, uh, a left pulse just after the just after just after the apex, we will feel a left pulsation. Yeah. But with the apex beat, if the uh, pulsations correspond to the apex beat, it is RV pulsations. If yes. there is a gap between the apex beat and the pulsations, it is due it to is transmitter pulsations of the left atrium. Yes, so you have to time the pulsations and make it certain that you are you are not missing a transmitter pulsation from the left atrium. Okay, right. Okay, good. Go ahead. Sir, yes. one point I want to make here, sir. From uh, inspection palpation, uh, severe pH we can rule out, sir, or we should wait because S two is not felt. There is no thrill. No. What is no thrill? Thrill. How does the thrill affect the? No, no, sir. The S two and this. Is it going to, uh, you are, are you expecting a thrill in pH? No, no, no. no. How do you diagnose pH clinically, uh, Guru? So loud P2, loud P2, we have to see loud. Uh, it's mostly depending upon the, uh, the the loudness of the second sound, presence of uh, non basic ejection clip, and also uh, permanent depressions which can be palpated in the second. Right in the cost, left in the cost space. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any any uh, any evidence to suggest permanent hypertension, Saroj? No, sir. No. Okay. Yes. Go ahead, percussion. Percussion, percussion of the left quadrant dullness corresponds to apex B. Second, uh, left and uh, right intercostal space are resonant. Right border dullness extends two centimeter beyond the right sternal border. What does that mean? The right atrial uh, enlargement. Okay, very good, excellent. Yes. Auscultation S1 varying in intensity, mostly loud, best audible at mitral area. S2 normal in intensity, best audible at pulmonary area. Close split. Sharp, high pitched opening snap is audible at apex. The same sound is audible at parasternal region. No other sounds. There is no mention about the, uh, uh, there is a, uh, the description is incomplete because there is no mention about the uh, A2 voice interval. Yes. Two questions. One, in a patient with atrial fibrillation, uh, how will you assess A2 voice interval? Where, where will you assess A2 voice interval? So just medial to apex. All right, the uh, location is right, but which cardiac cycle? Because if cardiac cycle is so irregular, and then A to Y and will go on very. So, so what is long, the long, eh? so long uh, RR interval? Means. You are going to look for a, a, a to Y and the long RR interval. Any other opinion? Sir, just before long cycle, sir. Just before long cycle. How can you assess uh, something before a cycle? 
how will you know that uh, sir just after the long cycle sir just after the long cycle so you have to fix up your mind is it uh, do, uh, on the uh, during the long cycle or after the long cycle sir after long cycle what is your explanation sir because sir uh, uh, in the uh, long cycle sir uh, the gradient will between the la and lb will be decreased there will be more empty no you should sir, uh, describe it sequentially in a in a long cycle there will be longer Uh, diastolic period diastolic, diastolic period resulting in more diastolic filling of the lv resulting in more decongestion of the la that is so and then what happens no sir sir what is you have to explain it yes sir uh, so as a result sir uh, uh, next to this long cycle the pressure difference between the Uh, LA and LV uh, will be less. Hmm. That's not the explanation. Yes. Anybody would like to give the explanation? You are almost right, but you could not completely explain it. Anybody, Gaurav, would you like to uh, try it? What happens is that, during, as you are rightly said, during a long cycle there is a longer diastolic period. When there is a longer diastolic period, longer emptying time, that will result in uh, 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 effective decongestion or uh, emptying of the left atrium, and the left atrial pressure can come down. But if the patient is having severe mitral stenosis, will that be very effective? Because no, if the patient is having severe mitral stenosis, even if the Uh, diastole is prolonged. The uh, emptying as well as decongestion will not be effective. So, in a patient with atrial fibrillation with severe mitral stenosis, if the atrial to eye center is still close after a long cycle, that obviously means that patient is having severe mitral stenosis. Because in spite of the long uh, diastolic period, no decongestion has taken or no decompression of the left atrium has taken place. So, in spite of the Prolonged uh, diastole. If A to A OI interval still remains close, that indicates that the patient is having severe mitral stenosis. So, in a patient with atrial fibrillation, when you are looking for A to OI interval, you should look at the cycle following the long cycle. And when you are looking for the uh, length of the diastolic murmur, Saroj. Yes, sir. In which cycle will you look for the length of the diastolic murmur? Sir, anybody? Anybody would like to give a comment? Sir, somebody who, who sir, in the long cycle, sir, in the long cycle. In the long cycle, why? The same reason why in long cycle there will be a uh, the uh, long diastole that will result in long uh, decompression of the left atrium if the mitral valve is not significantly obstructed. But if the mitral valve is significantly obstructed, the decompression may not take place, and you will be able to hear a prolonged I mean, diastolic murmur. So two two things you should the standard question of the examiners in a patient with atrial fibrillation with mitral stenosis. Which uh, which uh, in which part of the cardiac cycle or which cycle you will look for a to y interval? The answer is the cycle following the long cycle. And in which which cycle will you look for the length of the diastolic murmur? You will look for the length of the diastolic murmur in a in a long cycle where there is a long diastolic phase. Okay, right? Yes. What are the causes of loud first heart sound? What are the causes of S one varying in intensity? Two conditions where you can get S1 varying. Complete heart block, sir. Complete heart block. Yes, complete heart block. You can put everything into one category. AV dissociation. AV dissociation. Now all conditions associated with AV dissociation can have varying intensity of S1. Mention the four or five AV dissociation conditions. Ventricular tachycardia, complete heart block. Complete heart block. Uh, 
any other condition where you can get uh, 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 avid association. Sir, Raj, would you like to add, please? Sir, hyperkalemia can also cause sir, avid association. Hyperkalemia cannot give rise to avid association because sir, uh, what happens to atrium in that case? When there's hyperkalemia, what happens to atrium? <laughs> So, no. so it will not contract, sir. No. It, it, it will paralysis, so you cannot paralysis. have association. Yes, Any other condition <coughs> can give rise to avid association? Isorhythmic avid association. There is something known as isorhythmic avid association. That can give rise to avid association. Another kind of situation where there can be avid association is junctional tachycardia with retrograde block. So, junctional tachycardia with retrograde block, they can have a dissociation. Another condition where there can be a dissociation is VVI pacing. In patients with VVI pacing, there can be a dissociation. Uh, 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 there can be a dissociation where there is a VVI pacing. So, these are the few conditions where you can get VVI pacing, uh, dissociation. They are complete heart block, isorhythmic AV dissociation. Ventricular tachycardia with uh, uh, retrograde block, junctional tachycardia with retrograde block, and uh, uh, and in patients with R uh, uh, VVI PC. Uh, all these conditions you can have S1 VV in intensity. Okay, right. Uh, uh, S1 loud conditions. Sir, mitral stenosis. Mitral stenosis. Tachycardia. Fine. Tachycardia, very good. MDPMR. Uh, MVP. You should say pan-systolic MVPM. Yes, the the, the non-ejection non click sh should sit on the first cell. So pan-systolic my, my, my mitral prolapse. Okay, right, yes. One more. Tricuspid stenosis, Epstein. Epstein. Epstein, Epstein. 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 In some sometimes patients, the AST you can get loud for sound. T1 can be loud, sir. No, in Epstein, if uh, oh, yes, T1 can be loud. Yes, uh, uh, split second for sound, and T1 T1 can be louder than normal. But usually T1 is a feebler sound, so we cannot use the word for sound will be loud. You can get okay. split for start sound. Right. Sir. Any other condition? Short PR in the way. The patients with short PR in the world also you can get loud first start sound. So these are the few conditions you can get first uh, loud first start sound. Uh, of course, mitral stenosis. Any patient where you are hearing a loud first start sound, please turn the patient to left lateral position and carefully auscultate for mitral, mitral stenosis. The most important and the commonest cause for loud first start sound is mitral stenosis. So always rule out mitral stenosis in a patient with loud first start sound. Mitral stenosis, uh, pan-systolic uh, uh, mitral prolapse. Uh, tachycardia, then uh, short PR interval, and uh, in sometimes in patients with AST, where the uh, the uh, the uh, the mitral valve and tricuspid valve can close together, and all can give rise to loud first start sound. Okay, right. Yes. So waiting in this order. Okay, right. S2 is normal. Audible. Uh, close split. What do you mean by close split? In a, what does that indicate? <laughs> S2 close split. What is the condition in which you can get closed split S2? By definition, what is closed split? Sir, uh, generally less than 20 millisecond uh, sound we cannot hear, sir. But if uh, uh, it is less than 20 millisecond, but still we can hear it, then, sir, we can uh, get a closed close split, sir. Very good. Any, any, uh, usually the uh, two sounds are appreciated by the human ear when the, the difference between two sounds is more than 20 milliseconds. So if a uh, sound is audible at 20 milliseconds uh, as uh, two separate sounds, then that is known as the close splitting of second heart sound. And this usually happens when the second component of the, uh, uh, the sound is sharper. 
So in patients with uh, permanent heart hypertension, where P2 is sharp, you may be able to appreciate the close breathing of the second heart sound. Close breathing of the second heart sound is a feature of uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension. In the pulmonary artery hypertension, why does the second heart sound become close, Saroj? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Mm, so, in, uh, due to the development of the pulmonary artery hypertension, mm. the um, uh, this period, sir, um, uh, Angle. the P2 will be early because, sir, uh, compliance to the lungs is. Uh, Hangout interval. Hangout interval. Hangout interval. Sir, hangout interval will be shortened. Very good. Yeah, no, hangout interval or the pulmonary sound will be shortened, resulting in close breathing of the second heart sound in a patient with pulmonary arterial hypertension. But in a patient with pulmonary artery hypertension, can the uh, second sound be normally split or even widely split? What does that indicate? Say what? Say what? Question. With pulmonary arterial hypertension, if the second sound, second heart sound is normally split or widely split, what is your interpretation? Sir, if it is widely split, it means sir, pH is less. No. So I will go for RV failure with pH, sir. Very good. The patient has developed RV failure. RV failure. When a patient with pH, if you are finding there is a wide splitting, then you should start suspecting that the patient may be having. Uh, RV failure. What will happen to second heart sound in TR, Saroj? Uh, TR, uh, second heart sound. Uh, in case splitting. of MR, it is wide split. Uh, there no, 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 no. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, okay. uh, question is what happens in TR? Sir, in case of uh, TR, it will be self closed split. Yeah, very good. So another reason for close split is that in a patient with pH, if there is a TR, then the second heart sound can, the P2 component can come close to you too. Why it is so? Sir, the, because of the uh, TR, sir, uh, P2 will be early. Why? Sir, so, there are two chambers to get emptied, sir. Yeah, very good. Right at the moment. Yeah. Uh, are we can empty? See, whenever you say, say something, you should first explain it and then say, say the reason. So in a patient with uh, associated tricuspid regurgitation, RVS has got two outlets, one to the right atrium and another to the pulmonary artery and that will result in early completion of the RV ejection and hence the P2 can be earlier. Could you get the point, Saroj? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So because you should always think sequentially so that it is very clear to you. So there are many reasons why the second heart sound can be close to it in pH. One is uh, uh, the hangout interval uh, comes down. Two, tricuspid regurgitation can result in uh, early emptying of the right ventricle. At the same time, the second heart sound can be widely split in a patient with permanent artery hypertension if there is associated RV failure. Okay, right. Yes, okay. Any other point to be discussed? Sir, in PTA, we can also get close fitness again. Yes, yes, it can be paradoxically split. Why? Listen. Can we make low split, single sound? How can happen in a PDA? Why? The explanation. Sir, in the PDA, sir, we can get all three according to the development of the pH. Oh. All three means? Uh, sir, like it can be sir uh, close split, uh, uh, sir uh, uh, close split or sir uh, paradoxical split. Sir, according to the development of the pulmonary arterial hypertension. Hmm. How can there be paradoxical split? You only say the paradoxical split. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> sir, in case of PDA, yes. uh, sir, first, sir, um, A2, A2 will be uh, sir, delayed. Sir, so there will be a wide split when there is no pH. A2 will be. A2 will be delayed and hence there is a white split. What do you mean by that? No, sir. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that will be a sir, paradoxical one. Yes. Oh, uh, what, sir, are, uh, what, sir, are the, what are the mechanisms of paradoxical split in a patient with, a, in a patient with PDA? 
सर बिकॉज सर इन पीडीए लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ द हार्ट इज गेटिंग मोर ब्लड सो सर ए टू विल बी डिलेड सो वॉल्यूम विल बी हायर दैट्स नॉट द मेन रीजन low peripheral low vascular resistance sir because of the pda sir oh result in uh, that will result in uh, decrease in aortic pressure to uh, uh, the aortic uh, uh, vascular resistance comes down that will result no. to sir in case hang out intervals yes uh, increase hang out intervals yes. That's what happens. There's a in a patient with PDA, there is an increased hangout interval that will delay the A2. And of course, the stroke volume also is more, but that contribution on the stroke volume is very minimal. But main is because of the hangout interval of the A2 becomes delayed, that will be more, and that will result in uh, even single second sound or even sometimes maybe paradoxical. Uh, uh, so, is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. There can be reduced reduction in the peripheral vascular resistance that will result in increased hangout interval of A2. That will delay in, cause a delay close to the A2. There can be single second heart sound or even paradoxical splitting. Okay, right. Single heart sound is also is paradoxical splitting. Paradoxical splitting can be of uh, three types: type one, type two, type three. What are those, uh, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, 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 during the expiration, we are uh, hearing the splitting, and uh, during inspiration, it will be a single sound. Okay, that is the type Th one. That is type one. Type two. Sir, in this type one, uh, we are getting P. Sir, uh, during expiration, we are getting P two earlier and A two later. Mm. Type one, sir. And in case of type two, uh, sir. Uh, Uh, again, sir, uh, we will get uh, in inspiration split, but sir, P two will be early and the A two will be late. And uh, in expiration, we will get uh, uh, sir single heart sound. <laughs> sir, uh, type two and type three, sir, we cannot hear by phonocardiogram. There is a normal pattern. Uh, so, 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 the sound is split during inspiration and signal during expiration is the normal pattern. No, sir. Here, P two will be early. P two will be early. Yes, and, yes, sir. A two will be late during inspiration. And during expiration, what will happen? Any one of you? What are the three types of paradoxical splitting? Type one, she has already mentioned. Type two is uh, had as a single sound, where the A two is delayed, but the A two occurs very close to P uh, two, uh, so it it is not separate. It's not uh, appreciated as a sound, a separate sound. So single uh, uh, um, S two also is paradoxical splitting. Type two, type three is it is had as a fixed splitting, where During inspiration, the uh, P two moves beyond the A two, and that will result in splitting. And during expiration, A two moves beyond P two, and that also will be split as uh, will be felt as splitting. So the uh, three uh, types of uh, paradoxical splitting is type one classical, type two single S two, type three it will be felt as a fixed splitting of the second heart sound. That is because during inspiration the A two is beyond P two. And during expiration, P two is beyond. A2. Sorry, during inspiration, P two is beyond A two, and during expiration, A two is beyond P two. So, if somebody asks you, you can say the type one, type two, type three. Okay, so uh, a single uh, in uh, paradoxical splitting, you can get uh, classical paradoxical splitting, single second sound, or something like something like uh, uh, a fixed splitting of the second heart sound. Okay, now coming to the Marmes. Okay. Sir, murmurs. The diastolic rumbling, low-pitched murmur, best audible at apex in the left lateral position. Mm -hmm. Then, sir, early. What does it suggest? Sir, it suggests uh, mitral stenosis. Yes. What are the causes of diastolic rumbling at apex? Three or four sir, causes. Sir, one mitral stenosis. 
second sir because of the flow murmur okay like, like uh, in case of pd also we can hear sir yes 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 and uh, sir, uh, sir if uh, very severe mitral regurgitation yes other uh, in case flow okay right so yes, sir. flow yes but other possible medical rumble at apex sir austin plate yes sir, asd very good austin plate murmur carry comes murmur carry comes murmur sir lm mixoma core triatrium can sometimes give very good left atrium mixoma core triatrium all this can give rise to medical rumble and sometimes in patients with mitral uh, atrial septal defect where the apex is formed by the right ventricle sometimes you may hear a uh, medial rumble apex because of the flow across the tricuspid valve so rarely sometimes in a patient with asd you may hear a rumble at the apex which is because of the increased flow across the tricuspid valve resulting in a tricuspid flow rumble okay so there are multiple reasons for uh, medial rumble at apex okay right yes early systolic uh, blowing high pitched murmur audible at apex localized at apex localized to apex grade 2 by 6 okay what is the suggest so sir associated mitral regurgitation no yeah, i think you have to think of mitral regurgitation there are oddities usually rheumatic mitral regurgitations are usually audible in the axilla and back also here it is localized but uh, uh sometimes uh, uh, uh all findings may not be there but uh, an early systolic murmur high pitched audible at apex you have to consider the possibility of mitral regurgitation okay right yes blowing pan systolic high pitched murmur audible at parasternal region no changes with the breathing grade 3 by 6 okay right so just suggest so it is uh, tricuspid regurgitation murmur okay Why are you saying why why it is not changing with breathing? Yes, sir. RV failure. RV failure. Very good. RV failure. When the patient is about RV failure, it may not change with breathing. Okay, right? Yes. The mid diastolic rumbling, low pitched murmur, hard at parasternal region, increases in on inspiration. Okay, in case of inspiration. What about tricuspid stenosis? Yes. In a patient with tricuspid stenosis, with tricuspid regurgitation, what happens to the tricuspid regurgitation murmur on inspiration? It it will. Okay. In a patient with patient with significant tricuspid stenosis with tricuspid regurgitation, what will happen to the Uh, a pan systolic murmur of tricuspid regurgitation during inspiration what happens when there is a during inspiration uh, uh, it will decrease it will decrease what is the explanation so because of the presence of uh, tricuspid stenosis yes then right atrial pressure remains high oh, so sir right. oh. the pressure difference between the rv and ra will not be uh, more so sir tricuspid regurgitation will decrease yeah so a yeah, very good explanation because when a patient with a uh, tricuspid stenosis during inspiration more volume of blood is coming to the right atrium and uh, since the uh, the uh, the uh, the mitral uh, tricuspid valve is obstructed when there is more volume of blood is coming to the right atrium that will result in a significant increase in the right atrial pressure and when there is a significantly elevated right atrial pressure is there the gradient between the right ventricle and the right atrium will uh, come down and hence the tricuspid regurgitation murmur can sometimes may become even less loud so in a patient with a <coughs> tricuspid regurgitation with tricuspid stenosis during inspiration there is a possibility that tricuspid regurgitation murmur can can come down that is because uh, when there is a more venous return coming to the right atrium because of the tricuspid stenosis Try like, uh, the the right atrial pressure can significantly go up. The gradient between the RV and the RA during systole comes down. That will result in less of uh, uh, tricuspid regurgitation, and the murmur becomes less loud. So people have described that in patients with combined tricuspid stenosis with tricuspid regurgitation during inspiration, the uh, tricuspid regurgitation murmur may not increase in intensity, or sometimes it may even come down. Okay, right. Is that clear to you? Uh, I think you have explained it very well. Excellent. Yes. Excuse me, sir. Oh. Uh, my voice is clear, sir. Hello. Yeah, yeah. You are very clear to me. 
सर नाउ वी कैन सेफली से ना एस डी राउट बिकॉज देयर इज इंक्रीज इन इंस्पिरेशन और दाउद एस टी से इज रूल्ड आउट बिकॉज बिकॉज Uh, there are plenty of features for us to uh, diagnose many other conditions, and uh, there is nothing to suspect ASD. Okay, go ahead. Mid systolic, mid peaking, hmm. rough, medium to high pitch, murmur best audible at aortic area, and conducted to both the carotids. Grade three by six. Okay, right. Yes. Suggest. Sir, mild mitral stenosis. Eh? Uh, sorry, aortic stenosis. Sir. Yes, yes, okay, yes. Sir. <laughs> yes, sir, I oh. oh, okay. Then sir, early diastolic blowing, high pitched murmur, best audible in the third intercostal space, left intercostal space, and heard down along the left sternal border. Okay, what does it suggest? What are the causes of early diastolic murmur? Sir, uh, sir, aortic regurgitation, pulmonary regurgitation. Uh, and and uh, sir uh, rs o huh? see when you are thinking of early diastolic murmur mostly it is only three conditions one is aortic regurgitation mostly 80 to 90 percent is aortic regurgitation small percentage can be pulmonary regurgitation and a very very small percentage can be over you know, Sir, uh, that uh, left uh, LAD. Okay, LAD. What is the name of the murmur? <laughs> yes, sir. So, it is uh, people have described it. It's not a dog's murmur. Yes. Where there is a proximal LAD occlusion, but more important than that is triangle regurgitation. Three uh, situations where you can think of early diastolic murmur are aortic regurgitation, pulmonary regurgitation, and triangle regurgitation. And people have also. Uh, described that there is a possibility that uh, uh, you can get an early diastolic murmur in proximal LAD stenosis. I have never heard it. I have tried to many times. I have tried to auscultate in a patient in whom there is proximal LAD occlusion, and I try to hear whether I can hear an early diastolic murmur. I have never heard it. So I do not know whether it is really audible or not. I doubt very much. Have you heard it? You must always try to hear in patients with the proximal LAD occlusion whether you can hear a murmur or not. I have never heard one. Sir, S4 is more common, no? Sir, in uh, MI, S4 will be more common rather than early diastolic. What did you say? The S4 will be more common, no? Sir, S4 will be more common rather than early diastolic murmurs. No, early diastolic murmur is very unusual. S4 is very frequent in patients with uh, ischemia, but uh, early diastolic murmur. Uh, because of a flow across the proximal LAD stenosis, it is described. It is known as dog's murmur. So some of the examiners will ask you, what is the fourth cause for early diastolic murmur? Then you can describe this. But I never heard it. I do not know whether it is really audible or not. Uh, it was described at a time when the coronary angiograms were not done that frequently. Okay, right? Yes. Go ahead. Sir, respiratory system. So it is normal. Abdomen, liver, and last three centimeter below the right costal margin. Systolic pulsations are faint. No fluid in the abdomen. So, so systolic pulsation felt. Tricuspid regurgitation is significant. Very good. Okay. How will you assess tricuspid regurgitation? Methods to assess tricuspid regurgitation. What are the clinical findings to assess tricuspid regurgitation? So, Bani, sir, uh, uh, by uh, elevation of the legs. No, no. How will you assess the severity of tricuspid regurgitation? Oh, okay, sir. Sir, prominent V. Uh, v and height of the V wave in the okay, uh, JVP. Okay. Then, sir, uh, uh, sir, pulsation, uh, liver pulsation. Liver pulsation, very good. So, sir, length of the murmur, 
ിറ്റിഷൻ <laughs> you can have, get transistoric murmur with even with mild mitral regurgitation moderate mitral regurgitation and severe mitral regurgitation is so in the, the length of the murmur will not tell you about the severity of the lesion in regurgitation lesion so don't it good the pitch of the murmur can tell sir if it is low pitch it will be uh, not that severe whereas high pitch Will be pitch will tell you in a patient with tricuspid regurgitation. PH. PH. Yes. But the other two points which you can look at are one is parasternal pulsations and third right atrial enlargement. So the points for you can look for a clinical diagnosis of severe to tricuspid regurgitation are prominent waves in the neck, parasternal pulsations, then the uh, right atrial enlargement, liver pulsations, and if you want. Uh, I only I think these are the only points. These are the points by which you can ask tricuspid regurgitation. Okay. Now coming to diagnosis, and then we'll go for ECG. Okay, right? Yes. Can somebody uh, uh, mute the, uh, the themselves because the external noise can be cut off? Somebody who is uh, Uh, from whose side the external noises are coming down coming uh, can he uh, mute himself okay right go ahead uh, uh, sarvesh yes sir this page is over sir okay now you come to the diagnosis and then we'll go for the further examination diagnosis sir rheumatic heart disease rheumatic heart disease Sir, mitral stenosis. Sir, I am unable to say that uh, uh, severity of the mitral stenosis. Okay. No, sir. Severe. But, sir, acquired, but acquired ventricular heart disease, severe MS mm. with uh, associated uh, severe PH, mm. leading on to uh, moderate to severe TR. Mm. So this this patient in AF with the RV of uh, RV failure shall we commit or not? That is. Uh, oh, if you want, you can come in RV failure because the patient has got J J E P elevated. Yes, sir. RV conditions are there. Uh, edema of both lower limbs or so RV failure? No, no problem. Yes. In N N Y H class two. It may take maybe class two to three. Okay, right. Yes. Now, see, you have to say, say all lesions. Sir, yes, sir. Tricuspid regurgitation. The patient has got mitral stenosis, uh, um, uh, at least moderate. Moderate. Mitral uh, regurgitation seems to be mild, and uh, he has got a um, uh, uh, aortic stenosis murmur. So, aortic stenosis could be mild. Yes. Uh, there is a problem in assessing the severity of aortic stenosis in this. In patient. presence of mitral stenosis and tricuspid. And also tricuspid stenosis, mitral stenosis can sometimes um, may uh, make the uh, the severity of the aortic stenosis may be masked. So you can you should say that it is difficult to assess the severity, but the patient is having a mid systolic, mid peaking, rough murmur. Uh, you will consider at least moderate mitral aortic stenosis. Yes, aortic regurgitation. Yes, sir. How much? Is there yes. a, are there any peripheral signs? No, sir. No peripheral signs. Sir, it will be mild only. Mild aortic. Very good. And uh, what about tricuspid valve disease? Sir, uh, uh, tricuspid regurgitation is significant. Very good. And tricuspid stenosis. Both are significant because. Sir, stenosis also, sir. Uh, because there is a R A large. R A large means there is a slow uh, wide descent. All indicate significant tricuspid stenosis. Sir, but uh, mitral stenosis. Sir, how to say in this patient? Sir, because we have not uh, outing uh, A two O S gap is also not there, and sir P N D not there, 
सर एसेसिंग माइटर वैल्व डिजीज इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ ट्राइकस्पिक वैल्व डिजीज there's some limitation uh, uh, i fully agree with you that uh, but uh, since the patient has undergone a, a, a balloon procedure and following that she has become asymptomatic again your initial observation that patient might have yes, mitosis yes. and has developed balloon valvuloplasty and now has become less symptomatic i think the uh, uh, the mass becomes symptomatic with uh, my mitral restenosis i would go and say that uh, probably is having moderate mitosis There is no evidence for me to suspect severe mitosis stenosis because I would like to a PND. Now I fully agree with you that there is a there is a limitation in our uh, discussion. But of course, if there was a discussion about the A two O S interval in a uh, in a cycle following the uh, long cycle, then it would have been very clear for us to assess the severity of I R two mitosis stenosis. So that 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 statement is not there. So uh, looking at the length of the murmur, at the most it is moderate. Okay, now we'll go for the uh, ECG and X-ray test and see a coin come to a quick diagnosis. Okay, right? Yes. ECG. So cell bleed ECG uh, with uh, so the normal standardization. So patient in atrial fibrillation with controlled ventricular rate. So axis is. Uh, 90 degree okay or maybe uh, more than 90 yes 100 yes okay yes sir then sir uh, patient in atrial fibrillation very good and uh, sir uh, sir in the v1 we can see the uh, qr pattern mm. sir and uh, sir there is a well yeah. uh, sir uh, this suggests sir that patient has got a significant uh, mm -hmm. sir are uh, either ph or sir uh, uh, dominance of uh, uh, rv what does the qr pattern uh, so small sir, q small r pattern indicate sir indicate sir uh, that sir rv A uh, pressure is high, sir. Pulmonary, uh, see, pul uh, pulmonary hypertension, sir. No, but in V two it is a uh, small r deepest. What is the what are the conditions which you can get a QR pattern in V one? One is pulmonary artery hypertension with a uh, uh, significant R V H. Second, R A enlargement. R A. Excellent, very good. R N Lajo, I think your training is very good. I am very, very impressed. I think you are getting well, well trained. It is R N Lajo. So whenever there is a, no evidence of R V H and there is a Q R pattern in V one, you should start suspecting whether it is due to R N Lajo. Here we found that R A is uh, uh, there is a right border is extending two centimeters beyond the right sternal border. So this may be because of the R N Lajo. Okay, right? Yes. What is that uh, beat? Extra yes, sir. beat. Sir, is this Ashman? Yes. What do you mean by Ashman phenomenon? Sir, transient right bundle branch block development in atrial fibrillation. It's a tiring phenomenon. One of the bundles get 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 tired, and that can result in aberrant conduction. And in eighty percent of the cases, eighty to ninety percent of the cases, it is the right bundle branch block pattern. In about ten percent of cases, it could be even left bundle branch block pattern. So it's a tiring phenomenon where one of the bundles fails to recover, uh, and usually, it, uh, how will you? Uh, what is the pattern which will make give you a clue that this could be a, a Ashman phenomenon? What should be that combination? Long and short. There is a long, long uh, duration, long uh, cycle followed by a short cycle where the uh, that will result in the aberrant conduction. Why this uh, in this uh, why this this long long uh, long short combination? Explain explanation. When there is a long cycle, 
the refractive period of the myocardium will be prolonged and so hence when there is an early beat that will that will uh, conduct with the refractive period of the not uh, myocardium refractive period of the bundle branches will be prolonged and uh, when there is a sh uh, short uh, 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 cycle that will result in apparent conduction so long short a combination of long short as a long cycle followed by a short cycle will result in apparent conduction and apparency is mostly through the right bundle branch block through uh, but sometimes in 10 percent of cases it could even be left bundle branch block pattern <laughs> and uh, the qr pattern can be due to rvh or it can be due to a uh, large right atrium in this patient uh, we, we do showing a small or with deepest i would go for uh, uh, the qr pattern is due to dilated right atrium Okay, right. Yes. Which ventricle is dominant uh, uh, in this way in the selectocardium? Sir, RB. Eh? Why did you say RB is dominant? Sir, axis. Axis, I agree with you. Axis is more towards right. That is a point more in favor of right ventricle hypertrophy. But when you look at the QRS morphology and QRS uh, size on the uh, chest leads, I would, I am. Uh, inclined to think whether it could be even it could be an LV because you are getting a small Q wave in V6 and in V5. Presence of Q wave in V5 and V6 indicate that it is a uh, uh, the LV forces. But anyhow, uh, ACG does not support either RBH or LV. So we will say the rate of relation axis more towards the right and there is a QR pattern which may indicate a right rate enlargement and looking at the uh, the waves, it appears as though the, uh, the LV forces are there, that does not tell us, uh, uh, does it give you a clue that the, the mitral regurgitation may be more dominant than uh, mitral stenosis? We can't be certain. Okay, right, let's go to the x-ray. What does the x-ray show? Uh, excuse me, sir. Huh. Sir, hello. hello. Sir, uh, are we saying, uh, sorry, uh, are we saying, can we say that ECG? Okay, pardon? Uh, no, are we saying, can we say that it's... Are we saying, no, no, I don't think there's are we saying the electrocardiogram. Because uh, uh, from uh, V2, V3 onwards, there are no RV forces. So, I would, I am inclined to think that this QR pattern is due to RL enlargement. Oh. Sir? Uh, in AVL, sir, S is more prominent. Yes, yeah, mostly it is a small or deep pattern. Yes. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, whether uh, sir, in case of uh, LV dominance, sir, this axis uh, and uh, all these, sir, and sir, moreover, sir, in, uh, in mitral stenosis from the axis, we can make out that how much uh, uh, severe stenosis is there. So yes, if sir, yes. then sir, LV will not be so prominent. I agree with you. What is the uh, what is the axis limit? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, if it is uh, more than hundred ten, it is severe mitral stenosis. Okay, no, no. there is no uh, statement like that. The statement is that if, if the axis is uh, uh, less than this, it indicates mild mild or low moderate mitral stenosis. Yeah, there is nothing like uh, more than 100 but if the axis is less than this, uh, it usually indicates that the mitosnosis or the mitral orifice is more than 1.3 cm square. What is the limit? What is the limit, limit of the axis where you will say that the mitral uh, orifice size is more than 1.3 cm square? So more than 135 sir, more than one. 135 uh, severe, usually with severe mitral stenosis. Sir, if it is uh, 60 and less, then it will be. Yeah, it is. If it is less than 60, then it is considered that the mitral valve orifice size is more than 1.3. More than 1.3. Okay, now we will go to the X-ray test. Okay, extra just which are the GMS enlarged? 
so the here in the x-ray so la is enlarged ra is enlarged so the apex is possibly sir rb type I can't be certain. Well, no, sir, not certain. Sir. I have yes, also, sir. I agree with you that maybe R V type, but I won't commit on it. Okay, right. Yes, but I am I'm quite sure about the right atrial enlargement and the left atrial enlargement. Permanent yes, atrial segment is prominent. Are you able to see the left atrial appendage? Yes, sir. Not full. It is full there. What are the what are the situations where in a patient with mitosis, left atrial appendage will not be seen? Uh, Post operative. What post operative? Uh, sir, uh, post uh, surgery. Uh, sir, open. Uh, sir, open mitral valvotomy after LA resection has been very done. Very good. Very good. And, and, you know, in you know, open or even close, more often in closed, closed yes. mitral valvotomy, the surgeon goes through the appendage and uh, like li, 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 uh, cuts off the appendage. In a patient, there was undergone a close mitral valvotomy. Or a surgeon, when they see something, very often they remove the left atrial appendage. Okay, right. Yes, too. So sometimes, uh, even without surgery, sir, uh, if it is uh, thrombosed and LA uh, appendix gets shrink. Very good. In a, in a thrombosis and uh, uh, the shrinkage of the thrombus, the left atrial appendage can become absolutely non prominent. Very good. Excellent. These are the two situations where left atrial appendage can, okay, will not be prominent. Okay, right? Yes. Is the upper lower vessels prominent? Are the upper lower vessels prominent? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Prominent. Sir. Where is it? I won't commit on a prominent yes. upper lower vessels in this patient. No, sir. Not much. Not much, sir. Not no. Sir, on the left side, sir. Oh, well, you we, are seeing one is seen, eh? We are looking for. We are seeing this one. Yes, sir. Oh, I think that's not enough. I think it's better not to commit. That unless you see clearly, there is a prominent. Sir, uh, sir, little more up and medial. Sir, little up and medial side. This one. Yes, sir. I will tell you. Okay, if you want, you can make a description that uh, it seems that on the left side uh, 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 the left, there is some suggestion that upper lower vessels may be slightly prominent, which can be read together with the uh, left atrium enlargement. So, uh, does this suggest more tricuspid regurgitation or mitral disease? So, tricuspid regurgitation. Okay, right. Okay, we'll go to the Next one. Okay, echocardiogram. What does it suggest? The peristernal long axis view showing sir, uh, uh, sir, uh, mitral, mitral valve not. Uh, the doming of the mitral valve is seen thickened. So uh, there is a spontaneous eco contrast seen in the left atria. Okay. So aortic valve mildly thickened only, otherwise sir normal. And sir, uh, is it opening well? You can sir, see aortic well. Oh. Uh, uh, sir, yes, sir. Little less opening, sir. Yes. Okay, yes. Yes, sir. And sir, uh, sir, are we uh, enlarged? And sir, okay, there, uh, okay. there is mild, mild sir, uh, wall, uh, LV walls are little thickened. Okay. Sir, LA is significantly enlarged. Okay. Uh, and sir, in the, uh, sir, the second right up, uh, sir, the color flow here, sir, uh, mitral regurgitation is not significant. No, Turbulence no. at the mitral valve is seen. Even if uh, there is a, in these views, we are not able to pick up the uh, mitral regurgitation at all. Okay, yes, right, yes. yes, sir. In the third view, sir, we can see, sir, uh, aortic regurgitation present, sir, mild. Yes. And, uh, sir, turbulence at the mitral valve is seen, uh, sir. Uh, okay, so in, in this view, the lesions are mitral stenosis. And aortic regurgitation. Aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Okay.
सर पेरासिटामोल शॉर्ट एक्सिस ड्यू सर आउटिक वेल्व सर थिकेंट सर पल्मोनरी सर आरवी सर एम पी इज एन लास्ट एंड सर पल्मोनरी वेल्व ऑल्सो सर लिटिल मीडियल so it is fused okay and sir here sir we can see the uh, in the third sir lower down left sir aortic regurgitation and pulmonary regurgitation very good and, and the doming of the pulmonary valve well here yes sir okay right yes and okay what does this indicate so here sir uh, uh, in four chamber view sir we can see sir uh, sir doming thickening of the mitral valve sir there is a spontaneous echo of the sir thrombus i think sir in the la there is a spontaneous echo of contrast echo contrast yes sir no definite thrombus is seen okay right yes yes sir and sir sir mitral valve is little uh, aml is little getting uh, uh, collapsed also but uh, sir we whether to mention or not i don't know Uh, uh, and sir, in the uh, second view, sir, we can see mild MR and significant AR, sir. Okay. And uh, sir, in the third, maybe, maybe a little more than mild, maybe moderate AR. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the third, sir, here RARV is enlarged, sir, and the tricuspid valve, sir, uh, there is sir less opening as well as the ring dilate, sir, dilated tricuspid valve, ring and severe tricuspid regurgitation. As well as uh, the turbulence in the tricuspid valve. Very good. There is a uh, doming of the tricuspid valve, tricuspid stenosis, and significant tricuspid regurgitation. Well, uh, tricuspid regurgitation is severe because it is reaching the top of the uh, uh, and uh, by looking at the uh, uh, IVC is not here, but if you can look at the IVC. Sir, are you? Significant. Okay, right here. Okay. What is the what all this is? Sir, here. Oh yes. So this is at the aortic valve level. Sir, aortic valve maximum gradient is twenty eight. Okay. So mild. And sir, AR is seen, sir. Aortic regurgitation. Okay. There is a doming of the uh, tricuspid valve. What is this? There is some degree of mitral. The mitral regurgitation. So, the uh, so mean MB gradient is seven point one. Okay. So, so, so it comes moderate. Okay. And uh, so this one tricuspid, sir, uh, mean coming seven. Okay. Yes, sir. It means severe uh, tricuspid stenosis. Very good. And sir, severe tricuspid regurgitation also, sir. Okay, right. So, what is the diagnosis? Sir, so, uh, rheumatic heart disease involving uh, multiple valves. Uh, sir, mo uh, moderate mitral stenosis, mild mitral regurgitation. Uh, uh, moderate, mild to moderate aortic regurgitation, mild aortic stenosis, severe tricuspid stenosis, and severe tricuspid regurgitation. And sir, pulmonary valve, sir. Uh, I don't know what to say, sir. Now you can put the way of one type doming of the pulmonary valve. So there is some uh, mild pulmonary stenosis and by mild pulmonary regurgitation. Yes, sir. Atrial fibrillation. Ah, uh, the patient in atrial fibrillation. Uh, with uh, uh, spontaneous echo contrast in the left atria, mm. with uh, sir R V, I could not understand whether uh, function R V function. 
ऑब्जर्वेशन मेड बाय डॉक्टर सर so should we say dyspnea is a, as a, in our examination that patient is dyspneic how will you make out whether the patient is dyspneic or not on clinical examination so there will be uh, uh, accessory muscles will be used with the yeah. tachypnea if, if, if the if the patient is making use of accessory muscles uh, when the patient is breathing i think you can say patient is dyspneic okay sir and if the uh, if the rate is more then you say tachypnea ah yes yes So actually, we were only. Can, 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 can you mention conditions where there is tachypnea without dyspnea? Anxiety is what, sir. Anxiety, all right. Sir, uh, um. What are the situations where there can be tachypnea without dyspnea? Anybody? Do you know? Saroj. Anybody? Another is uh, uh, metabolic acidosis. Ah yes, acidosis. Yes. Like kidney and uh, patient is not dyspneic, lying flat, and it's a. Yes, sir. You must always think of metabolic acidosis. Another yes, is hysterical breathing. Hysterical. Some people hysterical breathing can have. So three conditions where there can be tachypnea without dyspnea are uh, metabolic acidosis, hysterical breathing, and in anxiety state. Yes. Sir. Okay. So, uh, now next class we'll discuss about uh, tricuspid valve disease, and then uh, uh, what, uh, what would you like to have in the next class? Uh, that will be over in half an hour. So for the next uh, one and a half hours, what would you like to? Have? Is uh, somebody willing to bring a case, or should we have uh, some spotters? Some spotters. Or would you like to have some uh, discussion on uh, some hemodynamics or electrocardiogram? Hemodynamics, sir. Okay, we can have some hemodynamic discussion. Okay, right. We'll discuss about tricuspid valve disease. Come prepared, and then we'll have some discussion on hemodynamics also. Okay, right. Okay, good night. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank good you, night. sir. Thank you, sir. So from here now, ending the meeting. Thank.